quotes and the end. No hilarious comments like I usually try to do. All right, we were talking about TG198, an implementation guide for TG142. Um, as we know, TG142 is kind of the de facto or yeah, de facto law for what kind of quality assurance you have to do on your linear accelerators on a daily, weekly, monthly, and annual basis in many states. Um, this has come out quite a bit later. Um, and the reason for this is it is very encompassing. Um, and it was also being written at a time where uh, treatment delivery was rapidly changing with things such as VMAP. Um, so it's a 135 page document as opposed to TG142, which is I think 14 pages. Um, what it does is it estimates the time, personnel, and qualification for all tests, and then it provides sample daily, weekly, monthly, and annual QA forms. Um, it also tells you how you should be able to do this test, what kind of equipment you would need, uh, things to avoid, tolerances, things like that. Um, so what TG198 also added was some um, several new tests for VMAP. Um, when TG142 came out, VMAP wasn't very popular. Um, as opposed to today, where basically every center in America is doing VMAP, um, close to. Uh, so just to highlighting some of the more important changes. Um, these are not every change that has occurred between 142 and uh, 198, but these are what I identified as being the most important, and most important or most relevant. Um, first, they decided to change all gating tests to the amplitude or change it from amplitude to displacement magnitude. Um, so before you could do things in terms of relative percentage of gating between 70 and 30% instead of gating between 1 and 1.5 CM. Um, what this does is also make sure that it is able to correctly measure amplitude. Um, so the original way of testing, if you're doing just uh, like phase based, you would have no idea if your system was correctly measuring the height of the patient breathing differently each day. Um, they also said that daily QA must be reviewed by QMP at least once a week instead of once a month, um, and they highly recommend it, it being reviewed every day. Um, they also said that the daily repositioning test uh, tolerance has to be changed from 2 millimeter to 1 millimeter for stereotactic machines, um, or just a regular non stereotactic machine, uh, 2 millimeter is still sufficient. Um, they also said on the day of a stereotactic procedure, imaging must be verified within one millimeter. Um, I know we do, and a lot of other sites do a wince and lots on the day of an SRS, um, and that is sufficient. In fact, they specifically name that test as a way that you can validate your machine. Uh, they also said the weekly pickup times uh, must be performed once a week, and this time they specified that it must be performed at a different different cardinal angle each week. Um, you cannot just do G0 or G90 or whatever every single week. You have to do it on a rotating schedule. Uh, so those were the daily changes. Um, in terms of monthly, uh, one thing that they changed was the asymmetric red light coincidence. Uh, they increased it from one millimeter to two millimeter, um, and this is for off axis when you're looking at a half field block beam um, right along the central axis. It is still one millimeter, um, and the reasoning for this, I think, was just that. It's very difficult to tell what the light field is unless you have some very precise um, light detecting array, which most centers don't, most people don't, and even if you do, it probably doesn't have good enough resolution to meet their tolerance. Um, they also added an absolute couch positioning test. Um, the way that TG142 is currently set up is you have to just measure displacement. Um, if I move at 10 cm, I want the DRO to say that move 10 cm. Uh, instead, they recommend doing it from uh, a verified uh, longitude, lat latitude, and height every single month, and making sure that when you set up to that position, it is always the same point. You want to make sure that your table 100 is always table 100 once a month. Um, and then they also said that you should do a patient specific VMAP constancy test. Uh, the way they describe this is just having a QA patient that is going to be run on your QA device that you use for that machine, um, and you're going to do that every month to make sure that it is consistently passing your center's criteria uh, repeatedly. 
Uh, changes to the annual. Um, one thing they said is the MU linearity must be performed for static and dynamic dynamic beams. Uh, this is because in many Linux, the way that um, the method of delivery for MU actually changes when you have a dynamic beam. Um, the way they decided to test this is to just have two open fields, and in one of them, just kind of have the MLC pair for this way from the central axis be moving during delivery. Um, that was their recommendation. Uh, they also said to do a patient specific DMAT QA constancy, the same one that you would be doing for your monthly patient, uh, but this time throw in a beam in a route, the beam off halfway through it, and then start it up again and make sure that that still matches. Um, and then on top of this, they had a random assortment of renaming and minor clarifications of criteria. Um, they changed the name of the table SAG has to couch top flex, because apparently table SAG was causing confusion in some places. Um, so when I looked at it monthly more thoroughly and I looked at the recommendations, I saw that uh, most of the way that they're saying to do tests is actually matched with our procedures quite well. Um, some things that they mention is that SBRS machines now must do wince and lutz, whereas before wince and lutz was never even mentioned in 142. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it was cited, but it's never explicitly stated. Uh, they say you must do wince and lutz and you must use the most extreme positions used clinically. If your machine is going to do a T90, T180, C270 beam, you should probably include that in your wince and lutz. And beyond that, they say just use, you know, professional discretion on what angles and positions you can use for your machine. Um, if they said if they said if you're doing a cone treatment, that way some lots should be done with a cone, um, which makes sense. Uh, again, going back to that patient specific QA, uh, they say you should run that every month, same exact criteria, same exact measuring device, everything identical, and we're just comparing to make sure that yes, it is passing by the same exact amount this month that did last month. Um, they also quantified how long your monthly should take. Uh, they said a full monthly should take at least one to one and a half hours for a very simple machine. Uh, say you just had a single series active machine with two energies, uh, KB, uh, home beam, and that's it. No electrons, not a lot of photon energies. It shouldn't take you very long. Um, for a relatively complex machine where you got onboard imaging, you know, five or six electrons, five or six photons, um, they say it could take up to six and a half hours, uh, especially if you're doing total body irradiation stuff. As those now have additional tests. Looking at annual, uh, again, most things actually align very well with how we did things um, or how we currently do things. Uh, the way they recommend to do tests matches ours uh, pretty closely. And then they also talk about some other methods that we don't do, such as if you adjust the mission machine and you have an ion chamber array, such as a uh, blanking on that. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. No, uh, ion chamber array. Um, uh, anyways, if you have one of those and you just commission a machine, you can set baselines with that and water, and then use your ion chamber array for annuals going forward. Um, one thing that they change is your electron beam quality. Um, the way it's currently stated is it can be within plus or minus one millimeter or one percent. Um, they have dropped the 1% entirely. It has to be plus or minus 1%. Or, sorry, plus or minus 1 millimeter. Um, this is different than the way we do things. Um, in fact, I believe this is going to be, depending on the point you choose, a looser criteria than the percentage. Um, again, they also talked about doing the MU linearity being performed with static and dynamic beams. Um, and that's where they say to move the MLC pair furthest away from the central axis to change things up. So you shouldn't measure any difference, but in some machines, this is going to cause a different uh, other machine to mode up the beam differently. Oh, they also recommend doing an annual and SRS arc test uh, at max dose rate if you're using an SRS machine. Um, I know on monthly, the way we do things now is we just load up a beam, 180 degree gantry rotation with 180 MUs and hit go and make sure that everything checks out. Uh, they're saying if you have an SRS machine, you should be doing that with a regular beam and with an SRS uh, or a triple F beam at max dose rate. And the result of that should be plus or minus one MU or 2%, whichever is largest. Um, and you should have a, an observed one degree gantry accuracy. 
Um, so you should go in and get, measure your GAN speed after your delivered and make sure it has arrived to where you pulled it to. Uh, they also outline some tests for um, total body radiation and electron therapy, um, where obviously if you have a gantry rotation of one degree, if you have a patient standing five meters away from the gantry, a one degree difference is going to be more clinically significant than um, at ISO Center. Um, so they outline those things and what you should do if your machine is being used to treat that. Um, they also tighten imaging tolerances for serotactic machines. Um, a lot of the tolerances before were two millimeter, and they have been dropped to one millimeter uh, for things such as positional accuracy, isocentricity, things like that. Uh, getting towards the end, they also talk about how every department should have a QA committee that meets regularly. Um, what this QA committee should be composed of is a QMP, a uh, radiation therapist, uh, one that is going to be actually performing daily QA regularly. Um, and an individual that is certified by the QMP. Now, this could be uh, an assistant physicist, a resident, a student, somebody that is going to be doing a significant amount of monthly or weekly QA, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be board certified. Um, this committee should make sure that things are uh, going smoothly, that there are no consistent issues, things are being done, um, and to bring up uh, you know, new QA procedures if they think something needs to be changed. Um, they should also be consulting the administration on when you're running into personnel issues, such as we have commissioned a new machine and you haven't hired anyone, you know, what's going on, um, things like that. Or if you need some new QA devices, new OSLBs, anything like that, it should be this committee that brings it up. Or if you want to change the temple. Yes. The committee should approve it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now I'm going through a uh, some of the tables that they have at the end of the report um, where they basically very nicely outline every single test, the tolerances for it, things you can use to measure it, how long it should take, and who should be performing this test. Uh, here we see the daily QA. Um, obviously, it's all, all of your safety things at the bottom, uh, mechanical tests, and your output constancy where you can use, you know, some kind of ion chamber or diode system, a daily tracker, like most places have. And also budgets time, so you can come to your administration or whatever and say, hey, this is how long it takes us to do these things. Um, you may be unreasonable asking us to achieve these things this quickly um, and still feel like we are doing a good, satisfactory job. Um, they also outline uh, how to do profile constancy calculations. Um, apparently, uh, there's quite a bit of difference in the field in how people decide to analyze their constancy using like a daily tracker. Um, some places are just taking you know, left and right, and they're saying, hey, if these two values are identical, we have good values or it matches baseline. Um, they say you should take the entire field, use every point you can. Um, they give a, an example here. You took this both on the purple, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Text is obvious. Uh, yeah, I use something to walk. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yep, so here are requirements for monthly. Uh, as you can see, a lot of things are basically identical to T2142. Um, but now they say how long it should take, what to use, and your personnel. Uh, if you read the actual report, it talks about each and every one of these tests. And they give example ways of using this or doing this. So they say you should have your 80 cell calibrated ionization chamber. Um, you can have a solid water phantom at a measured depth or at a known depth with a correction factor from water to plastic that you calibrated after TG51. Um, they walk you through very precisely how to do all these things. Um, and they also get a lower and upper bounds for how long things should take. Um, obviously, if you have more electron or photon energies, it's going to take more time to do outputs. Um, just more tests, obviously very similar to PG142. Um, one thing that I find interesting is they didn't actually say one of the major changes they make here, which is the absolute measurement instead of just relative displacement, um, which is what's quoted in 142. And once we get down to the bottom of it, uh, after doing my own calc of all their times here, they quote 245 to 351 minutes, so about four to six hours for your monthly. 
Um, I also I didn't include a lot of the uh, imaging stuff here just because it's identical. Um, this one is the slide go crazy long. Um, so here we also have annual. Um, first talk about what you use large water tank for most things. Um, if you have a calibrated uh, ionization chamber, sorry, where is that? I don't know. Anyways, if you have uh, an ion chamber array, you can use that. Uh, they're saying that annual must be performed by the QMP. If you have someone trained by a QMP, such as a resident or an assistant, they should not be the one doing annual. The QMP should be present and be doing all the annual. Um, they also, again, break down all the time for all these tests. Um, they didn't put what I believe they quoted 200 hours, 40 to 200 hours, um, depending on how complex your machine is. Um, and another fun thing that they have here is what I found to be a, a somewhat random assortment of images down here at the bottom of the report. So just random QA devices. Like you just start and strong, they're not even labeled. This is figure one. Yeah, they, they show an output check. Um, Pointer. Mm -hmm. RPM Phantom. They, they do talk about gating systems. They, I think they yeah. only have two or three gating systems, and they talk about how you can test each individual one of those. Um, so RPM is the first one they talk about, um, as many, many varying units have it. Imaging Palace. Las Vegas Phantom. Just just random picture. Yeah, just a surplus of random picture. Well, from the uh, instruction manual for the uh, right. Design. If you've never seen the screen of, I don't know, a KV that's electrometer. A that's the onboard. So yeah. Used for imaging. Yeah. I guess you can look at that and be like, oh, I know what that is. And if you've never seen it before, say, I don't know what it is because it isn't labeled. <laughs> you know, I think. So this is the this is the format for when you submit a document. You think they're going to insert yeah. something it's there? Gonna in, yeah. It's going to be inserted somewhere in the document. Yeah. Okay. Making more sense now. Oh, yeah. Here. Spatial resolution. But yeah, I recommend going through and reading it. A lot of that you can glance over because it's identical to what I believe monthly is do anyways for monthly and annual. You, 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 you've been searching for the name of the iron yeah. chamber and you, and you have been using it at, when you were yeah. going to Flower. They had that's what they used to use before they used it. Yeah, I have a matrix. Yes, the matrix. Oh, no, that's not Jimmy's phone number A for beam steering. Yeah, beam steering on the profile. The, the, one. the IC profile. IC profile. Oh. Yeah, it's just chilling. Uh, that's the IC. Yeah, I oh, okay. Yeah, they just really small. That's one of them. I was killed. That was like, yeah. Any 